Jesus glad and the devil mad. Amen. Let's rejoice. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 1 in our live stream audience as well. Uh, the Word of God is the only thing, that and the Holy Spirit, that's going to get us past this crisis. I said it's the only thing that's going to get us past this crisis. If you think that the social distancing and uh, the masks and, and, and all of that behind closed doors and all of the, all of the directives that we've been given, and we're, we're obeying them out of respect, but not out of faith in them. I mean, you know, we, I don't go to the grocery store and lick the handlebar of the cart, okay? I don't go out of my way. I know Jesus protects me, but I don't go lay in the middle of the freeway and dare an 18-wheeler to run over me. I, you know, I use common sense. You know, a lot of this could be common sense. And we've been taken out of common sense by government decree. I'm, I object to that. I said I object to that, and I believe the Bible. We've got to get back to the Bible. The biggest problem is that... The, you know, I, I contend that our, our nation has drifted away from the Bible, drifted away from truth. The Bible is the truth. And so let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. Well, that's not a resurrection script. Well, you know, it doesn't say resurrection in the verses, but I'm, it, it implies that Jesus rose from the dead. We know that. Don't we know that? Is there, any, is there a body in the tomb? There's no body in the tomb. Amen. The tomb is empty. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, God, who at various times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He made you and I. He knows everything about us. Amen. Who talking about Jesus, being the brightness of his glory, the brightness of his Father's glory. That's Jesus. You want to know what, know what God looks like? Look at Jesus. You want to know what God does, what his will is? Look at Jesus. Look at the Word of God. God and his Word are one, and Jesus is the Word. So who being the brightness of God's glory and the express image of God's person and upholding all things by the Word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins. Just think about it. Purge means pruned. I mean, he cut off every sin of humanity. Nobody's going to hell because of the sin they committed. There's only one reason they go, and that's because they fail to receive the free gift of righteousness, the free gift of salvation through accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. That's the only reason people go to hell. Hell was not created for man. Amen. It was created for the devil and demon powers. It breaks God's heart for people to choose. You have to choose to go there because every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth will ultimately choose. And today could be your day to choose. Will you, will you receive him by faith? When by himself he purged our sins, cut them off, and he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Everybody say, that's me. That's me. See, we, we, we're the children of God if we're by faith in Christ and we're, we're flesh and blood. Uh, then he also himself took part of the same. In other words, he became flesh and blood. Jesus became flesh and blood when he was born of the virgin. And, uh, and he, that he through death, that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Boy, that kind of looks like right now, doesn't it? Lots and lots of people are bound by fear and panic. And what is, what is the fear? Is the fear of corona? No, really behind all of it is the fear of death. The fear of death is behind every sort of phobia. I mean, there's a, whole, uh, there, there is a whole section of psychology and psychiatry that's dedicated to helping people with all kind of phobias. Let me tell you something. The greatest help you can get is have the devil canceled in your life and believe God's word. 
I mean, really all this ritual that we're going through, all this social distancing and all this don't touch your hands and don't touch your face and don't do this and don't do, all of that is almost like germophobia. Yes. Yes. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it at times, but don't trust in it. I said, don't trust. That's not what makes you safe. You know, get out the blood app. Have you got app, apps on your phone? We have apps on our phone, all kind of apps. You know, you plug into the app, you know, and, and check it, and it helps you do things. Well, take out the blood app. You know, the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. It's delivered us. Amen. And so notice he, he died to, to uh, destroy the devil. Uh, who had the power of death and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Again, he was a man. He had flesh and blood. And wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. See, isn't it wonderful for Jesus to be called a, a brother? I mean, he is so close. He, he's, he's, like, he's like our older brother, and, and his father is our father. You know, when we say one nation under God, you know who God, that God is? That God is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That God, for the Jew, is the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hence our Judeo-Christian ethic. And that God is not the God of everybody else in the world and every other religion in the world. We're not all under the same God. That's the problem in this nation. We forgot who God is, and we forgot who his son is. And we certainly forgot what he did. Boy, today's a good day to get reacquainted and to be reminded in some cases. I'm getting all excited up here. I don't know. Are y'all excited at all? Or are you just kind of been so used to being behind closed doors, you kind of don't know what to do. You just go, Whoa. you're looking around. They're too close to me. Look at those people over on the front row. They're all too close. That's my family over there. They're all together. They've been, they've been huddled in one spot for a long time. It's part of my family. Praise God. All right. So it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. What is a high priest? Well, it's basically a good word for a representative. God uh, has Jesus represent him, uh, God to us, to mankind, and man has Jesus to represent us to him. For instance, when we sin, Jesus points to his blood, which he took up to the mercy seat. And he said, uh, Father, my blood has been shed for them. They've been made worthy because of my blood. That's a good thing to keep in mind when you feel condemned and shamed. And so, <clears throat> and so he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God uh, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people for in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to succor or comfort them that are tempted. Jesus has been through everything. Another verse in Hebrews says, he was tempted in all points like as we are and yet without sin. He was tempted to fear but didn't enter into fear. He was tempted to be sick but he didn't get sick. He was tempted in all points. You think about any temptation, sometimes we think about sin as temptation, but sometimes temptation is just temptations, tests and trials, frustration, disappointment. Those are all temptations that we can either resist or enter into. Unforgiveness. We're, we're tempted sometimes not to forgive somebody because of the way that we've been treated. Well, you know, the Bible demands that we forgive. So if, we can't, if he tells us to, then we can. We can. And Jesus was tempted the same way. What about Judas? Don't you think he was tempted not to forgive him? You rascal. You betrayed me. No. He forgave him. But Judas didn't forgive himself. Are you with me now? Amen. All right. So according to the word, Jesus is alive right now. He's not just some figurehead. Amen. He's alive. He's seated at the right hand of God. Amen. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. Don't you think his prayers for us hold any weight with God? To hear some, some people's uh, way of thinking, they just think God sent this whole thing to test us. Let me ask you something. Are you, any of you parents out there, any of you parents, why don't you lift your hand? See, we've got some parents here. Would you do that to your children? Would you make them sick to teach them a lesson? Would you infect them on purpose? 
Well, I'll tell you what, you've been misbehaving. Here's a little virus of flu. You can suffer with that for a couple of weeks. Here's some cancer. Just deal with that. You'll, blind, you'll, learn, to, you'll learn something. No, we wouldn't do that. We'd be arrested for child abuse, and that'd be right. And, uh, but no, I mean, people, uh, they accuse God of being a child abuser. And, and so <clears throat> he's seated at the Father's right hand. He's faithful as our representative. The Bible says he's a faithful and merciful high priest. He's merciful. Why is he so merciful? Because he's touched with the feelings of our weaknesses. He had all the same ones. He took upon himself this kind of flesh, this kind of blood and bone. He, he took upon himself our humanity. He went through life yet without sin. Praise God. And he overcame all of that and wants to comfort us today. And he, he wants to grant us mercy. And how is he going to comfort us? Well, there's no comfort outside of God's word and God's Holy Spirit. I mean, when you cut yourself off from those two, then you cut yourself off from any supernatural comfort. And what we need is supernatural in this, in this entire country. We are relying on all kinds of medicine and medical. I'm not saying throw it out. I'm saying there's another dimension that's been missing on live stream. It can't get out on live stream. There's not a corresponding corporate anointing or presence of God on live stream. We, we don't have worship. We're not getting together. You know, it, the Bible says, look, neck like, Neglect not the assembling of yourselves together, as puzzle pieces, one version says. But so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, what day do we see approach? Jesus is coming. I don't have a date for you, but he's coming. He's coming soon. I don't have a date. I'm not here to say a date. I'm saying he's nearer than he was. And so when we see that date and the reality that Jesus is coming, then the reality of the resurrection, that's what I'm talking about today, the reality. Everybody say the reality of the resurrection. As a nation and as the church, the way I see it, we've been talking about the reality of this virus, the reality of how it's transmitted, and the reality, reality, and most of it is theory. Most of it is just somebody's opinion. They really don't have any proof much of anything. In fact, there's no proof that what we're doing is going to help. Oh, yes, but, but, oh, but, yes, but the numbers are not as bad. Well, I, I want you to know all of what we're doing, all of this work, uh, this uh, social distancing and, and, and staying in our houses and not touching our hands and our, washing our hands 150 times a day and not touching our face and all of those things. I mean, some of that's common sense. Some of it's overkill. And it, it, that was factored into the models already. And so they still said, oh, 240,000 Americans are going to die. No, they have, there's no way it's going to be that way. I said this two weeks ago. I pointed in the microphone on live stream. I didn't prophesy it. I declared it. Amen. I said it won't be 240,000. It won't be 100,000. It won't be 50,000. It won't even be 25,000. It'll be less than the flu. It's just the flu. It's another version of flu. They didn't show, to call it the Wuhan flu because then we wouldn't have taken it as seriously as we've taken it, and we wouldn't have given up our rights like we have. Right. Folks, we've given up our rights. Yes. Yes. You know, governments, I, I like the last statement on our website, uh, a statement on the COVID, but it says on our website, and I believe this, you know, governments can be corrupted, and freedom not uh, practiced is freedom stolen. We have to practice our freedoms. We have, to, we have to allow ourselves to embrace our freedom. Oh, well, that was a good reason. Well, what was it a good reason? I don't know that it was. There wasn't any debate about it. There wasn't any alternative medical opinions expressed. We've got at least one doctor that doesn't agree with it. He went to medical school, practiced for umpteen years. And we have many others. We have one that made a statement in our, in our suit that doesn't agree. So, you know, what I'm saying, Pastor, you're, you're talking about politics. I'm talking about the truth now. Amen. The truth, only the truth that you know and apply in your life can make you free. Not, not just some concept of truth, but what we, what we believe enough to practice. Amen. Are you with me now? Yeah. Jesus is the answer. Yeah. And it takes the Word and His Holy Spirit to do it. Now, in Hebrews 2.14, it says here, it says that he took a part of our own 
flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, uh, even the devil. Well, we know destroy there does not mean that, that the devil ceased to exist. He, de he still exists. Demon powers exist. There's angels. There's demons. There's God. There's a devil. A lot of Christians don't even want to talk about the devil. They act like the devil's died. Well, no, he's still alive. He's doing things. That's what he's doing right now. But Jesus, well, if Jesus destroyed him, then he's, well, yeah, he destroyed him, but it's up to you to believe that and apply it and act like that. Amen. So the word destroy there, it, let me give it to you. Uh, you know, it, 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 he, he, he did that to destroy the devil and deliver those who all their lifetime were subject to the fear of death. They were in bondage. Sounds like the world today. And, uh, and that he might, see the word might, the might there is on our side, not his. He did something, and it's up to us to believe it. Right. Why do we believe it? Because we can see it? No. Faith doesn't believe what it can see because you don't need faith to believe what you see. Faith believes the unseen is a fact. So in spite of this, whatever it is, you can call it a pandemic. I don't even, you know, it's worldwide. It's taken a lot of lives. In fact, the entire death rate are all over the world. It's not 240,000, much less America. So their numbers of their estimates are completely wrong. And they're trying to say, well, that, that's just how models are. Well, if that's how models are, let's not go by models. Let's go by facts. Let's go by facts. Can we go by facts? What's wrong with facts? And so he delivered. He might deliver. He might destroy you see it's up to us to receive that it's up to us to act like that it's up to us to believe that and so he did everything he needed to do 2,000 years ago there's nothing more he needs to do all we need to do is activate and and walk in the reality of his resurrection the reality of it most of us believe in the concept of it but do we believe see believe is an action verb it requires corresponding action in order to be effective. And so, I want to give you a couple of uh, other uh, scriptural uh, versions, different uh, kinds of Bibles that uh, gave a different uh, interpretation of that verse about Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death. He broke the grip of the devil. He rendered inoperative. Another one says he rendered uh, the devil ineffectual irrelevant. Isn't that what the, they said the church was, irrelevant? Basically, we're not essential, so we're irrelevant. So get behind your doors, shut up. You can have church online, but just otherwise be quiet and don't say anything. Well, I just couldn't take it anymore. Did that 15 days, we had to do something else. Why? Because of this right here. This right here. This has to rule. I said, this has to rule. <laughs> I mean, didn't the disciples have the same, the same thing? They whipped them and beat them and said, don't you dare teach and preach in that name. Well, you know, if it's against the law, you look after it. But we cannot help but teach and preach in that name. And they went back to their own company. They assembled in a big old group and they prayed and the place shook. I tell you, the place is shaking and baking in here today. <laughs> he put an end to the devil, he par I like this one, he paralyzed the devil. He paralyzed the devil. He dethroned the Lord of death. Ooh, I like that one right there. The Lord of death has been dethroned. So the resurrection is proof that we've got a right to be free from the bondage of fear and death. But we have to, we have to enforce, we have to believe. Our part is to believe. He did it already. Well, I can't see it. I don't, listen, Pastor, I know all that stuff's in the Bible. But I tell you, I ain't, I'm not in the habit of believing what I can't see. I don't believe it unless I can see it. That's all there is to it. That's just how I roll. I believe it when I see it. Well, have you ever seen your brains? All right, so... When Jesus rose from the dead, he found his disciples had self-quarantined. I mean, they disappeared. 
I mean, John hung around a little while with Mother Mary, you know, but after the crucifixion, he, he joined his brothers over there <laughs> in an undisclosed location. And they were not afraid of the COVID-19. They were afraid of the Roman 33 AD. They were... <laughs> They had a a difficult time believing that Jesus rose from the dead. They thought it was all over. And Jesus told them. He said, I'm going to see you later. I'm going to go to Galilee. I'll meet you there. I mean, it was like he never said it. They spent three and a half years with the master. They saw him touch the leper and make him clean. Now, Jesus didn't socially distance himself from disease. He touched the leper. In fact, that's even against the Jewish religion, they're not supposed to, they're not even supposed to be in public. They're supposed to say, unclean, unclean. Everybody's supposed to scatter and socially distance. But Jesus didn't. He didn't socially distance himself from the little woman who had the issue of blood. She's unclean, but he, he, she touched him right on the hem of his garment. Jesus just didn't pay too much attention to man-made rules. He paid attention to, to seeking to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Are you with me now? And so they had a difficult time. And Jesus, in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says that Jesus spent 40 more days with them after the resurrection, and he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Showed himself alive. You'd think the first time they saw him after the resurrection, that would settle it. Now, you know, they didn't believe Mary and the other Mary. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. They were going to finish the job of anointing his body. They didn't have time because that day, the day that Jesus died was Passover. It was Passover. And so he became the Passover lamb. He fulfilled every, he fulfilled all of the types and shadows. He's the Passover lamb. We just, we just had Passover Wednesday night and Thursday. So that's like a Sabbath. In other words, you have to stop at sundown of Passover from working, and you don't work for the whole next two days. And then the next, uh, next after that was the Sabbath. You don't work on that day. So by the time they could get back to the tomb, it was first day of the week, Sunday morning, first day of the week. That's why it took. He was there three days and nights. But when they came back, he was gone, baby. <laughs> Not there. <laughs> And the angel said, he is risen as he said. I mean, even the Romans knew he was going to raise from the dead because they put soldiers out there to keep the stone in place to keep the disciples from stealing his body and making it look like he rose, except an angel came down. And when the angel came down, he countenance was fierce like lightning and those keepers started shaking it. They were the original Quakers right there. They were the original ones. And then they fell like dead men. And then they left. And they told their story, and, and, and then it just, the story died, just like today. There's a lot of stories that are dying. We're under, we don't understand how uh, you know, politicians and government fi- officials can lie like this. Well, we've seen it, haven't we? Are you like me? Do you not trust just everybody because they say something? I want, I want some facts, folks. Time to wake up, church. But here, so... Uh, Jesus, you'd think when he went uh, after the Mary, they came back and said, oh, he's risen. We saw him. They didn't believe it. John and and Peter ran to the tomb and they looked in and sure enough. And they came back to tell the rest of them and they didn't believe it. So by the time Jesus showed up, he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they didn't believe. And then he stuck with them. He's so merciful. He could have said, you know what, I'm through with you. I'm going to repeat this whole thing. I'm going to come back again. I'm going to find me up some more disciples. No, he stuck with those guys. I said he stuck with them. All their faults and all their unbelief and all their doubts and all their fears. And he stuck with them 40 days to make sure they had a good start. And he declared to them the things concerning and taught them more perfectly the things concerning the kingdom of God. They didn't understand what we're preaching here today. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the New Testament yet. God gave them a little space. He gave them a little, you know, a a little room to, to, to learn. We don't always know everything when we first start out. 
thank God I've never quit going, being a student. In John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, it says here that many signs, John said many signs did he in the presence of the disciples. Many other signs that are not written here that he did. Why would he do those in the presence of the disciples? To, to prove himself alive. Now let me ask you something. If those disciples 2,000 years ago needed that much proof of his resurrection, can we see why then people nowadays doubt because, listen, we don't see Jesus. We don't see the empty tomb. We don't see anything. But what we do have is we have the Bible. And we ha and I'm telling you, a lot of, I went into this Bible. A lot of people died to get us this Bible. And we have his Holy Spirit. And so really and truly, we have no reason to doubt. We have the witness. We have the testimony. It's time to believe it and act on it. Are you with me now so far? Everybody say the reality of the resurrection. See, that's the word. The word gives us the reality. Three, three quick realities that, that, that you probably already know, but we need to remind ourselves today. Reality number one, Jesus died for our sins. I mean, that, that's exactly what, what Paul said. He wasn't one of the original disciples, but he, he started preaching and he had his Damascus Road experience because he was hauling Christians off to jail. And then he met Jesus face to face. Most of, most of us haven't met him face to face, but Paul did. And he, so, he told the Corinthians in chapter 15, 1 Corinthians 15, which is the resurrection chapter, he makes, the, he makes the case for the resurrection how it's not optional in Christianity to believe that. You either believe that or you're lost. That's what he said. And he said in verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. A lot of people don't know that. They're trying to earn their way to heaven. They're trying to be good. They're trying to do this and do that. They're trying to, you know, be a good neighbor. They're trying to do the golden rule. The golden rule won't save you. The golden rule is not, I mean, it's, it's we ought to do it, but that doesn't save you. Jesus is the only one that can save you. And he's already done it. We have to receive it. We need to receive it. He bore our sins. And then in 1 Peter 2, 24, reality number two is in 1 Peter, I want you to see that's, all of that's past tense. You know, uh, Paul said past tense. He, he, he died for our sins. He was he, in our place, in other words. And then in, uh, <clears throat> in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, Verse 24, it says here, himself, for he bore our sins on his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. See, there it is again. He died for our sins. He bore them on the tree. By whose stripes we were healed. And he's quoting uh, Isaiah 53 that was prophesied of Jesus. There again, Jesus fulfilled all of the verses. So at the same sacrifice for sin, he sacrificed himself for our sicknesses and diseases. He literally bore them. But as we were singing this morning, death could not hold him down. Another, another way to say it, sickness couldn't hold him down. Cancer couldn't hold him down. Coronavirus couldn't hold him down. He came out of the grave. The resurrection, the reality of the resurrection is we don't have to have COVID-19. We might, we might expose ourselves to it where we ought to get it. We don't have to have it. And if we get it, we don't, certainly don't have to die from it, and we certainly don't have to have the worst symptoms. Well, you, you don't understand. I've got certain uh, things in, that, that I'm battling. Well, let's get rid of those too while we're at it. Let's get rid of the complicating factors like diabetes and, and COPD and all the other things they're talking about. Can't do much about old age. You know, we'd like to all turn back the clock. I'm turning back my clock every day, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. <laughs> no, my youth is renewed like the eagles. <laughs> all right, so, so the resurrection reality is that we're healed, passed in. We don't have to beg him. Oh, God, please take away this, the coronavirus. No, we rebuke it. We have authority over it. If we don't do something, it won't get done. Jesus already did it all. You want him to come back down here? No. He's, he, he's saying, do I have to come back down there? <laughs> Did your mom ever tell you that? 
Have I, have I got to get, come to that back seat and straighten y'all out back there in the back seat? I know none of you have kids that fight in the back seat. All right, so. All right, re reality number three, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. We all know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be rich. Might. What's the might? The might is we have to believe it and appropriate it. Might. We have a part to play in it. Well, I'm rich. I, my family's not rich. I don't, I'm not in the... No, rich just doesn't mean a millionaire. It means having an abundant supply. It doesn't mean barely get a long boulevard at the corner of Lack Lane. It doesn't mean starving. We've got people in the society right now that are asking for help that have never before had to ask for help. It's a shameful for them. They feel shamed. They feel condemned that they're having to do this. You know, this is the answer. The reality of the resurrection is Jesus wants to supply your need. Amen. He can, I tell you, he knows where the... The coin is in the fish's mouth. <laughs> One time he owed taxes. They were demanding taxes. He told Peter, go fishing and get the coin out of the first fish's mouth and give it to him for your taxes and mine. <laughs> he still knows where the gold is. He knows where the silver is. He knows where the opportunities are. Praise God. Come on, let's lift our hands right now. The reality of the resurrection.